Because now your heart is speaking, not books, not your parents, not your reading, nothing. Your heart is speaking. You know what is right and what is wrong. What is it that you have to overcome? Your ego, your shaitan, your laziness, your disobediency. You're not caring except for yourself. Your priorities, it will kick in. You will understand. Easy way or hard way, you will understand. It's still the easy ways. We are being tested. None of us are being tested for nothing. That's why we're just taking it easy, especially the stupid American-born types. So spoiled and so privileged. Western types. Doesn't matter what nationality you are. And doesn't matter where you're born or you are sucking in this kind of system and you are holding on to it very strongly. Because whatever you do, there is no consequence. There is no, how you say consequence? Whatever you do, wrong thing you do, there is no bad results from it. Because you are surrounded by comfort. There's no bad results. Meaning what? You can do as you like. Come down, come down. Now is not the time to be there. Come, come down. Go to Anne, go, go to sleep. You can do as you like. The whole system is saying, that's okay. Don't force. Don't tell them anything. Let them be. They're young only once. So the young, the youth, when you're growing up, is not the time for you to grow, to learn. It's a time for you to feed your ego. So when you reach 16, 18, 19 years old, that's when now your body and your desires will catch up to your ego. Maybe when the kids, they are young, they don't have, don't have any desires yet. They have an ego. There's no desires yet. They're not responsible. They're not responsible. They're masum. But someone else is responsible. The parents are responsible. So later, the dunya and the desires catch up with the ego. In that time, shaitan will unlock everything. That's already too late. If you think that time, you're going to learn something. But growing up in the system where you do something wrong, it doesn't matter. You fail, it doesn't matter. In anything, it doesn't matter. There's always second, third, fourth, fifth chances that is there. But not understanding that this is a mercy coming from Allah. When you understand that you're forgiven, it is a mercy. You do something wrong, it's a mercy. You will be a servant that is grateful. And a servant that is grateful is going to run to please his Allah. Saying, I did something wrong, still you're not punishing me. I deserve the fire still. Then I must run to at least to say thank you, to please you. And if there is a job, there is a duty, I must run top speed to that. But anything that is happening, there is no consequence. You're free. Second, third, fourth, fifth, endless chances. There's no punishment. So, now you become very spoiled. You can do anything you want. There is no punishment. There is no consequence. Consequence, then later on when you're growing up also, you think you can do whatever you want in life. You live in this bubble. Everything is comfortable. You care very much for yourself. For yourself, your comfort, what you want. Doesn't matter comfort or business. What you want, you care very much. Priority, not what Allah. Talk about your share. What about share? Family, no. Yourself. It's yourself. That is your priority. That is what you're running top speed to please. Whatever you're running after. If you're understanding the mercy is coming from Allah, then you're going to become very grateful. And any chance to show that you can do this for Allah's sake, you run. You say, of course I'm going to do it. Just like Habil and Kabil. Just like Habil and Kabil. Just like Ibn Salama. And that Sahabi who is the opposite of Ibn Salama. 
Just like Habil, when the order came, you worked so hard, now you have to give something up. They say, take my best. Habil is saying, I worked so hard, why have to give the best? Trying to be slick. Ibn Salama asking Prophet for prayer. Understand this. Ibn Salama did not leave without the Prophet's blessings, without the Prophet's prayers. He asked for the Prophet's prayers. He was actually forcing the Prophet. Because if he was really in love with the Prophet and knowing sincerely, he doesn't have to ask. He knows his heart is going to tell him what the Prophet wants. But he wants to go out because he's having jealousy from outside. Just like so many Muslims, they go through all this social media, there's so much jealousy from everyone who is living the perfect Instagram life, which even Kafirs know is all fake, but Muslims are the first one to fool themselves. Because if you're not holding on to your prophet, then you're holding on to shaitan. So they're running, they got very jealous, but you fool yourself, think, saying, I'm doing this for Haq's sake, I'm doing this for this sake, I'm doing this for that sake. But no, you're not. First thing, that one who's guiding you, saying, is not for you. No, please, I want to. It's not for you. Ibn Salama saying, pressing onto the Prophet, saying, but I can help so many people. I can help so many people. How many of us coming here with that notion we're going to help so many people? Who are you helping now? Who are you helping? Are you running to help? Insisting, Prophet made one prayer. One, two, three, he started to become very they start to have a lot of things. Is he thinking it's coming from Allah? He's saying it's coming from me. Is he thinking this is because of the blessings of the Prophet? He did not. This is that reality. He's saying it's because of me. He's only afraid because he has to go without the Prophet. He has to go with the Prophet's blessings. If he goes without, he knows that he's going to get a curse. So his relationship with the Prophet is also a superstition kind, you know, like so many people, they have, they hold on to the Shaykh because of that. He said, I must ask their permission. Some using words like this, like this, some speaking both sides of their mouth, some saying, I'm going to do like this, like this, asking for your prayers. That is not permission. I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. I ask for your prayers. That's not permission. Still we say, okay, you're only fooling yourself. So difficult for you. What do you think we're going to say? No. But your shaitan managed to fool you again. You're not taking steps again, taking steps back. So we say, okay. As you like, Ya Rabbi, you know, I don't know. But those ones are very sneaky. They'll say, oh, we asked for your prayer, and you said yes. I said, yeah. Go ahead, fool yourself again. So Ibn Salama, he forced it out of the Prophet wasalam, And he became, he owned a lot of things. Did he help? He did not help. He did not help. When the Prophet asked, where is Ibn Salama? Every one of them, they put their heads down, and asking, did he help any one of you? All of them put their heads down. The order came for zakat. Sahabi went there to collect. Now this is the proof now. The proof, the test is when you have something. Maybe it's wealth, maybe it's position, maybe it's strength, maybe it's health, maybe it's something. What you have, that doesn't belong to you. It belongs to Allah and His Prophet. And Allah is commanding the Prophet to collect. And that's when Ibn Salama is showing everything. Showing. He's saying, 
he's demanding bribes from us. Huh? Many came also, not many, let's say some they came. They say they came with nothing. They say we believe everything. They say we kiss your hands and your feet. We need your prayers. We pray. Things open up, not because of our prayer, but because of Shah Effendi. And then when it happens, they break every promise they made. We didn't demand that they make any promise. They break every promise. Who did you help? That one? That's not helping. This one, I give so much money. Really? Are you getting the money back? Uh, yeah. It's not helping. This one I help. Mm, and it's a business. It's not helping. Ah. We are not even going to speak to ask you for zakat. We'll let you burn. We'll let you burn the gold that you wear around you. It's burning now. We're not going to say nothing. You should know. This is tariqat, no? What we have to say. Yeah. So he's not really believing. He's saying, this is me. This is my, my work. So you're going to ask something from me? No. Say, let's see. Go collect from the other one. The other one, like Habil, he's saying, Take the best, take everything, no. Take half, no. Take the best one, no. We only have to take out of every 40 parts, one part. To be fair, they collected. What did that one gain? Dunya and Ahirat. What did that other one lose? Dunya and Ahirat. He lost and he lost and he lost. He tried again the time of Abu Bakr Siddiq to say, he woke up a little bit to say, now I'm going to give my zakat. Abu Bakr Siddiq refused. It became what? Haram. You understand? And Shah Fendi had warned years ago that soon those ones who are not sincere especially, that time you want to give, it will be forbidden. You will not be able to. We are not going to take. So it became forbidden. He tried it again during the time of Hazrat Umar. Yeah. As that you must say, do it one more time. Do it. Do it one more time. I'll cut your neck off. For that one, his neck is more important than a pillar of Islam. So he didn't give. Failed again. He didn't give. We are here to think. We are here to use our intelligence. Akal. Where is your akal for? Where? Oh, for dunya. With your dunya friends, your dunya ideas. Like a jinn, you're understanding so many things. But you're not understanding that one next to you, understanding that one next to you, understanding that one next to you, understanding who is in front of you, who is behind you. What, what are their problems? Who are they serving themselves? So difficult. That is a sign. When you are here and it's so difficult for you, to come for zikr, it's so difficult for you to be doing things for the sake of Allah. There is something wrong with your faith, with your connection. It's off. That's enough sign. Understand, all of us here, once upon a time, we had nothing. And we were here, and we were running every day for everything. You understand? We are here to serve Allah and His Prophet. To serve our share and what He has given us this job, this work. We're not here to serve our mother, our father, our husband, our wives, our children, our brothers. You understand? Look, that one is running in the way of Allah. You understand? That one is running in the way of Allah. He is doing. He is sweating. He is doing. He is running. Give respect to him. 
even if it doesn't give you salams, who cares? We are here to please each other, for each other's happiness. But you see, he's running in this way. He's not, it's not for himself. What are you doing? Eh, a little bit here and there, it's not the same. You have everything, but a little bit here and there, it's not the same. That one has nothing, but it gives his heart. When he's running, giving his heart, maybe he doesn't look left and right to please other people around him. It doesn't matter. Because we will all come to the day when nothing is going to save us, not our father, our mother, our children, they're not going to save us. So look to your amal, look to your ibadat, look to your hizmet. And look to your sincerity. Wa Allah tawfiq al-fatiha. Amen. Assalamu alaikum.